the Fishing Daily Podcast with me, Oliver McBride. In this episode, I'll be speaking to Patrick Murphy from the Irish South and West Fish Producers Organisation on the tie-up scheme, which will be coming up for the Irish fleet in October, November and December. Patrick, uh, what do you think of the tie-up scheme that the um, government is offering? I think it's tough, um, a tough place to be for a fisherman, and I'll explain why. I have boats now that are tied to the pier wall for the rest of the month because they don't have enough quota because of the TCA deal to stay fishing for the rest of the month, right? And that isn't the first. That has happened throughout the year. And we're seeing our boats with less quota. And I'm on the QMAC. I'm, I'm, I'm on the Quota Management Advisory Committee. And our main job is to make sure that there's enough fish, as scarce as it is, to keep boats fishing for 12 months of the year. So regardless of, of, of what boats need to make a living, we try and do our best to give them enough fish to have the opportunity to go fishing. And, and um, we hope uh, boats won't catch all of the species that we put out there, because if they do, there'll be nothing left for the following month. So we, we give a higher rate of quota, hoping that a section of the fleet will catch that, and make enough money out of that fish, but others will target elsewhere. So just to explain, you have like the, the gadoid fishery where boats don't target the nephrops, and then you have the pelagic fishery that they go at the pelagics and they don't and target the gadoid fishery. So you have boats going away, you have boats that go to the porcupine and stay away from the, the, the smalls and areas where the other ponds are or up in the Irish Sea. So we 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 um displace our boats to make a living. So We've already balanced the books during the quota management meetings throughout the year to deal with the losses that we have. So we would have been giving out maybe 28 ton of hay for a month. And at times we've had to reduce that to 12. Uh, and that's where the penalties have already been paid. So the tie-up scheme uh, comes in in the last three months of the year. And even though the boats have balanced the books and made their losses throughout the year in the demersal sector, they're now going to have to tie up again for a month um, and not fish, hand in their license, go to a solicitor, get all the paperwork, um, uh, tell their crew, look, your opportunity, this is it. You know, you're a hunter-gatherer and um, we, we've capped it now with this. This is the best we can do for this month because um, we're going to leave some fish for our other colleagues in, in, in the month that we're tied up and they might get a bit more. And hopefully in the next month, they'll tie up and we get a bit more. And so for the last few months, um, it won't be as bleak as, as the first nine months. And, and we're getting a few euros from Europe instead of the fish that they took. They're going to give us money. Now, here's the, here's the thing. So we asked for X amount of money and they decided, well, 10 million is enough. But they took 50 million, you know. So where's the other 40 million? Now, um, we have a system in this country where there is no such thing as ITQs and no groups of an ITQ and an ITQ is an individual tackle quota. But an, an individual should also stretch to segment tackle quota as far as I'm concerned. You know, this is, um, this is the anomaly. And um, we are seeing um, the richest in our um, country getting liquidity schemes. And um, on the other side, then they're told, well, we balance the books between you and you can share it out and um, be happy with that. And I didn't agree with that. I have spent the year nearly trying to bring that forward within the task force. And uh, I, I failed miserably. Um, and I didn't get, I did get the message across, but uh, I wasn't able to achieve fairness um, within the type scheme. So our organisation, um, and there are boats and other organisations that don't, don't seem to be given, as far as I'm concerned, um, proper compensation for their losses. So, um, and, and look, we are the organisation from the very start that tried to look for a scheme that was equitable and fair for every single licensed boat in the country. And uh, our submission was very simple based on effort and days at sea 
and we believe that we lost 20 percent so to balance the books if boats could show that they had stopped fishing for 20 percent of the year then they should be able to go to europe and say look we've taken the pain we've stopped fishing for at least 20 percent of the year and we need to be compensated for that and the way we looked at it to be fair we said look like the smaller boats uh, um in the small scale, um, regardless, um, would be a hundred euros a day, and that would be seven thousand six hundred of, of a payment to, to those boats. Uh, we believed between over twelve and um, eighteen meter, eighteen, uh, yeah, eighteen meters. Um, what was classified as an insure boat should get a uh, thousand euros uh, a day, and that would be seventy six thousand. And the boats over that then uh, should get 2,000 a day because they have doubled the quota uh, as the boats in the smaller segment. And that would be uh, um, 152, 76, 76, yeah, 100, yeah 152,000 a year. And, and we felt that was fair and, and that was equitable and that was a cash payment to lads and that had been paying back throughout the year, like, and, and it, they would have to show that they were at the pier wall, that, that they had been fishing for a minimum of, of, of 76 days, which is 20% of the calendar year. Uh, I, I, it, it didn't even get a discussion. It, it didn't even merit somebody to say, well, hang on a second, we, we, we might put that in the suggestion, su suggestion box and, and we take that to Europe. It was dismissed out of hand. You know, and, and then, uh, you know, they decided to go on the earnings of boats and you see, you know, a boat, he's two inches smaller than the other fella and, and he could have a difference of maybe ten or 15,000 for the month. And sure, that's not the reality of fishing outside of the water. Like, you know, the reality, the way we work and operate the, the, the quota system is boats under 55 get one share and boats over 55 get two shares. Uh, regardless of a boat being uh, 63 feet, or 120 feet, uh, they're in the same category. They're allowed to catch the same fish uh, and they have equal opportunities and they should have equal opportunities to accessing a tie-up scheme because both of them are giving up the same as the other one. And that's that's fair and equitable for us. But the other Southwest, with, this was put forward now, not by me. This was actually put forward by an inshore fisherman and, and an aquaculturist who came to me first and he said, look, why don't you look for a system that nobody will probably be happy with but everybody will get something out of it and and there'll be no um division within the industry and i said well how do you do it and he he set the payments and then it was one of our members said well how do we, we match it by effort we match it by days and the minimum would be 76 you know days tied up and the compensation would match that but sure if somebody was tied up 90 days or 100 days you know they got better value for their money there was more fish being left but still, they'd get that payment, you know, it'll be set at 76 uh, to cover the losses. And to me, that made perfect sense. Um, we're going to find out now in the next number of weeks the different schemes that have been put forward. And, uh, and, and the, 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 the unfairness, even though we're told that, in my view, uh, of, of one scheme and, and, and over another. And... Um, that's where we're going to be at. And I, 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 I'm saddened by it. And I'll tell you why, um, Oliver. I think it's going to create a division between our industry again. I think after the good work of bringing people up to the flotilla in Cork um, from all over the country, um, and then in Dublin, we really see representation from all over the country. And in fairness to the Cork lads, which there would have been a hell of a lot more there, said it would have been wrong when there was a limitation on the numbers that were allowed up the river for them to take the spots of the other lads, you know? And, and, and to have that unity and to be on the one word, um, to jeopardise that again by, uh, you know, bringing in schemes that weren't uh, fair, in my view, to, to, to our fishing fleet, regardless of what Metier fishing they were in, um, to me was, was wrong. And um, that's my opinion personally. And... Um, uh, my organisation would feel a way more stronger than that um, opinion and me and, and we'd have to see what, what that will mean going forward but for me now we, we have to concentrate on making the public aware 
of what tie-up schemes, what it means for boats, what the outcome of the decommissioning will be, what why we're in this position, the resources we have, you know, and, and how we're being treated in Europe and the people that are going out to Europe to represent us. And I got a phone call today and he said, you know, you're gone very quiet. Um, you, you haven't done much since the flotillas. And I said, look, somebody said that to me. So I, I actually asked the girl in the office just to take down uh, the diaries, you know, that she'd be sending me this meeting and that meeting. And you have to get off this meeting now because there's another one on in a half an hour. And you have to go into that. And all these meetings needs preparation. All these information that comes back from these meetings has to be disseminated between our directors. And then they decide does it go on to somewhere else. And and all this work is work. Like, you know, um, there is information coming from all over Europe at us, and we have to go through it. Like we have to see. And of course, if if we can make decisions in the executive, in the producer organizations ourselves, and we don't bring that out because if I sit down every email and every uh, correspondence that came into the office to my membership, they just wouldn't hit the on button on the computer. They'd say, this is, this is crazy. We, we don't have time for this. So we're paying a man inside the, in, in the office to look after our interests and to do the best for us. And my fear is that uh, despite my best efforts, um, the viewpoint of the people outside there is that we're not doing enough. And we're not getting enough results, and we're failing in our in, in what we're um, is re, is required of us to try and protect this industry. And I I cannot find an argument against it because if we're going to have a decommissioning scheme now and we're going to lose a section of our fleet, I'm being honest, that's a failure on our part on 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 the representation of the industry. It's a failure on our government. It's a failure on the people of this country. To help us to fight for it and, and the simple reason is this we have 15 percent of the pie of our own pie and the other countries that have the 85 percent are not introducing decommissioning schemes so that means their fleets will continue to visit our shores to visit our waters and to sustain their coastal communities which the fish they catch in our waters while at the same time our fleets are going to the scrapyard. Our fishermen are being put out of business. Our future generations don't have the opportunity of following in their parents' footsteps, regardless of whether they do want to or their parents want them to follow in their footsteps. That right is being denied them. And but this, but this, this, this decommissioning scheme, I think, I think people doesn't understand quite that it means that the boats are taken out that's, that's family-owned boats, boats that's owned by individuals. The, these big companies uh, and, and France and, and Holland and these, these are company boats. You know, yeah. if, they lose their, if they lose fishing, it's not directly impacting a family and an Irish coastal community. It's only affecting the profits of uh, a multinational. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and that's it. So maybe he won't buy a new Mercedes this year. He might have to wait six months, 12 months. That's the difference today. But look, I've seen this. Like, I, I fished out of bed tomorrow, and I've said this on numerous occasions. And listen, so I say it because it's true. And if, if, if people don't believe me, all they have to do is go down to bed tomorrow mm. and, and see the changes that are down there. And that was a thriving fishing port, and it was built around it. Oh, in fairness, tourism has moved in there and the whale watching and, and all that. And look, and they're lucky. And but it shouldn't be an either or. It should be complementing one another. You know, there should be as many tourists coming down onto our piers to meet fishermen and to see the job that they're doing, you know, at the weekends, as there is to come down and see the whales and the other and the other activity. And I'm 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 I holiday in Spain. And, and if somebody says, Oh yeah, you should be uh, stay stay um, vacation. I wish I could. The climate doesn't allow me to do that. I have to get out of this country for health reasons and get a bit of sun. I, I really do. I, I have to um, for health reasons, as I said, and I, 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 I my wife and, and will be forcing me to come more often, but at least we've shown that we can do the work from out there as here because um, 
even though I went out into the sun, I can guarantee you that the days I was outside there, at least at least 40% of them was working, um, at least. And I have no problem with that. Um, I, I, it, to be honest with you, I probably, if my wife loved me, it would have been 50 or 60. But um, uh, I have to have balance in that as well, too. Um, so, yeah, and, but while I was out there, we did. My wife gave me a couple of days that I could check, pick the, the venue. And we went to a couple of fishing ports, you know, and um, there's signs up. We're not criminals, you know, we're, we're part of the EU, but you, you shouldn't criminalize us. And I talked with the fishermen down there. And in, in, in the port of Pablo, they had nearly as many in number of boats uh, as we had in Castellan Bear. And it's only a small fishing port in the Mediterranean and um, a thriving industry and huge money for the fish. But people, you could see the difference from the people that came to buy the fish. Like, th there was no, you know, animosity towards the fishermen or these were doing anything wrong. They, they, they applauded these men for going out and bringing in the fish and, uh, and, and putting in food for these people to enjoy. And to be honest with you, the prices they were being paid, uh, my jaw was on the floor for most of it. I, I, I couldn't get over it. They, you know, they're getting some money for the fish, um, and I'm not joking, yeah, 10 times um, uh, uh, what some of our lads are getting here. Now I know that's the buyers get caught as well. It wasn't the boatmen, but they were selling them in little um, um, units on, on, on the pier wall, and um, they, they didn't have a lot of fish. But what they had, they were getting premium prices for, you know? And as I said, there was queues everywhere um, trying to get at this fish, and it, it, it was a sight to behold, you know, and it was refreshing, you know, to be able to see this. I'd love to see it in our own home ports, but um, it, that's the difference, really. And um, I guarantee if somebody came down to them and said, listen, one in the five of those boats is going to be scrapped uh, to allow an Irish boat to come in here and go fishing. You know, uh, I, I, I don't think it'll go down so easy. And that's the true play, you know. And isn't that the danger as well? Like, we're talking about a, a tie-up scheme, right? And we could see what happened on in Scotland when they went into a voluntary tie-up scheme during the COVID thing, where foreign boats came in and took over their fishing grounds. Like, down around the south coast, you know, that's and, and on, the, on the west coast, very heavy, heavily populated by boats from the continent. Is there a danger as well that when our boats are not... But there. Yeah, but that's you're, but you're not, that, really that's what I'm telling you. You see me smiling, right? It's a defense mechanism. I smile. I just go, like, what you're saying to me is, is a weekly occurrence outside of my window in, in my office. Like, every week this happens. Our boats tied to the pier walls and the Spanish boats come in straight into the back of the truck. Genuinely, no, no, no inspections. None. And, and, and off they go. And, you know, like, we've raised this with 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 the, that agency that that's job it is and, and the question i have is how are they able to do that how are they able to put the fish in the back of the truck when you come down and hours have to be waiting to pier or whatever else right and they said ah but patrick you know we have a deal done with france and belgium and i said yeah i i, I understand that i'm not stupid like but if you look at the lorry so you're telling me that spanish lorry with spanish boat yes french flag over the boat or maybe an english flag over the boat but like, they're not going to a factory in Belgium or France. Like, they're get, unless they're going to get on the ferry from Cork, go down into Spain and and and, and drive back up to France to weigh the fish and then take it back down to Spain. You know. So and like, I'm I'm not trying to pick a fight with the Spanish, or I'm not trying to say that they should be hounded the same as the Irish. Uh, no, no, no. I'm thinking the Irish should be given the same opportunity as these guys. Like, you know. So like. Uh, we have the lowest denominator of the fish, as I've said. Like 15% now um, is overall of our fish. But like in the demersal fisheries, like uh, we've 3,000 out of 60,000 when it comes to hake. That's 5%, you know? And that's reciprocated across many of the stocks. Now, I, I know we have a larger share of the nephrops because we swap out fish and we get more and, 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 and we target and that that's keeping the vast, vast majority of, of our fleet going like with, with most of the gadoids and, and you know, haddock and hake and um, 
we're not too bad in, but there's just not enough for everybody else. You know, Monk, um, Megrams, bit of soul. We're not looking for um, a, a dramatic increase across the board. Like we're only looking for uh, a small amount of fish in our own waters. We're not, we're not, we don't want to go to France, we don't want to go to Spain. Just want to catch the fish off our own shores and, and be able to do what they're doing and put it into the back of the truck and send it without hassle to, to the markets. And you see, if, if we had proper quotas, there would be no hassle because, you know, we'd be able to put the fish in the back of the trucks like the others because we'd have the same quantities to be able to put into the back of the truck where we're fishing alongside these guys outside in our own waters. And um, that's what we're looking for. But we, the, the, Europe is always on about a level playing pitch. Well, the pitch they're playing on anyway is on the side of a mountain as far as I'm concerned, you know? So maybe the pitch is level in accordance to the mountain, but it ain't level to the to, to the flatlands of where, where, where we would be hoping to be talking about, you know, or maybe they're talking about a level playing pitch on, on, on a wave, you know, and uh, the boys are at the top and we're in the bottom of just about to be swamped because it it it, it makes no sense to me. Um and and here's the thing: when you talk to people, it makes no sense to them either. You, know, you can't find somebody in Europe to say like this, this is okay because let's let let's reciprocate it. So as I've asked the questions, and these are very simple questions, how much um, effort do uh, the Spanish people get in their own waters? How much fish quantities of fish in relation to the visiting fleets do they get? Same in France. And we see in the UK they have seventy five percent now. Everybody else is twenty five. Holland, Belgium, like, you know, I've said this as well, we can use different sums and different equations to go to Europe to make our points. Like Belgium has 0.1%, I think, or 0.2, is it? It's, it's a percentage anyway. It's, 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 it's a decimal of a percentage of the fishing ground of Europe. Yet they have quotas in fish far in excess, far greater than, than we have. Not in Belgian waters in the point two percent, but in our waters. You know, like we just need to tell that tale to the Irish public and then say, well, what 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 does it mean to me to, to me, Joe Public? Look at the billions, and I mean billions. This isn't small money, like the billions of euros of fish that's been taken from our waters over the past 35 years. And I know the counter argument is, oh sure, where would you sell it? You can keep your fish. But sure, these countries are important fish from all over the world because they don't have enough. The European Union can't supply their own people with fish. So if anybody turns around and says to me, ah, you can keep your fish, that wouldn't last long. You know, these people will go hungry. And 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 they need our food. You know, we've plenty of it. We've too much. We have to export it. And and if they think that the level playing pitch they're talking about is that because we've too much per population or per capita, we should get less and they should take more. But well, I certainly don't agree with that. You know? Like, well, they wouldn't stand for it in any other business, would they? No, of course not. So the, I, I make the same uh, analogy as, as Poland with the coal. Like, we wouldn't be allowed to take the trucks over and say, hey, our takes in the European Union, yeah. just filling up a few little trucks of coal there to take it back. Thanks very much. We're all in the Union. Happy days. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the Polish people would want to see twenty or thirty trucks of coal, you know, rocking into the place and out every week in a big wave out the window. Hi lads, you know, see ya. You know, and then and then realize that <laughs> they get a phone call from their agent in Ireland. Uh, uh, um, uh, Christoph is, is is in Ireland, and Christoph rings back to his. Polish company and they say, Christoph, our sale of coal has collapsed in Ireland. Yeah, how could it stay up? Sure, Jesus, <laughs> you're after allowing them to drive 30 trucks of coal free into the marketplace. And um, should they don't want our coal now? Of course not. Sure, so it's the same in reverse. We have boats coming into our waters, taking 85% of the fish, and we have to go to their markets and compete in their markets. When they have 85% of the fish, they're already waiting for us from their boats that they catch in our water and like who's going to get the better prices and everything else like the homegrown man or the fellow that's 
you know, after trucking them across Europe like the rest of them, like and saying, well, here we go. It's green that green went and go over. Doesn't that's, work. That that's another way. problem, isn't it? When when our boats yeah. are tied up as well, those markets are being oh, taken up fine. by other yeah, yeah. being filled by other uh, countries yeah. or other fish suppliers. And, 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 and you don't think that they ramp it up? Yeah. Do you think that they're not catching more fish when they see the Irish boats tied up? Yeah. <laughs> You know, Come down to Castletown Bear and you'll see it. it, it and this, this is a situation that politics doesn't bring in, doesn't realise. That's that's devastation for, for of course, the communities. Like, this is our bread and butter. You know, like, um, as I said, I, I hope people will watch the documentary and, and they'll see some a little bit of history. I can, or Solomon Bear was the um, high king, I suppose you could call him around Bear, like, he was the chieftain or he was to the, the man in charge anyway and when the spanish came in after catching the fish outside they might have to pickle them or come in for water or supplies or whatever else you know um there was a chain across the gap and they had to pay to see the chain lowered or to get out they had to pay uh, um uh, royalties to this um chieftain um for to be able to fish in what he considered was his waters you know, and um, they, they probably weren't taking 85% of the monitor away, you know, and he left with 15. I, it's just... Decommissioning is a real possibility now for the fleet. Um, unfortunately so. I think that it's um, it, it was the wrong avenue to pursue. Um, we were hoping that we'd look at uh, getting fish back under the burden sharing and maybe um, actually looking to develop uh, a claim on more fish through the renewal of the common fishery policy. Um, but uh, I, I, I'd say this is, I, I, I'd say it's set in stone now. I'd say there's enough um, people on the task force accepting that this is something that it'll have to happen. Um, we don't have the fish to keep the entire fleet going, you know. It, 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 the recommendation now from BIM looking at the figures was that there was um, different seg segments and different boats. I don't know, have you seen that? But like the shocking part of the report from BIM was that I think it was nearly one third of the RSW fleets would have to, to go with the losses that they had. Um, and that's not going to be the case. I don't think there's even going to be one boat from the RSW um, segment uh, going to be re re retired from from Ireland's fishing industry's um, endeavours to sustain their coastal communities. So that that was kind of surprising, you know, when they have sixty seven percent of the losses according to the DCA, and the others only have you know uh, thirty three. Um, Yet they're the ones that have to leave the industry. So there seems to be a mismatch there um, that the minister might have to look into um, for the future, otherwise that'll be the trend. And um, we might be left with uh, 23 boats in one sector and 23 boats in the other, um, uh, over 80 metres, you know. Um, and that would be a sad a sad indictment for an island nation with the richest fishing grounds in Europe, um, that we couldn't keep some sort of a fleet going, you know. Um, so most, yeah. the, most of the pelagic boats are, well, outside of outside of Blue Whiting, most of the pelagic boats are doing their fishing in waters outside of the Irish waters. They are, but they, it, but they still lost a lot of fish yeah, in comparison to what yeah. they would have got. Now, look, uh, look uh, uh, the, the stocks last year were down with the scientific advice, and I'd say those boats probably are going to earn as much. Now, um, the threat to them is definitely the price of fish. If, if other countries are going to get massive increases, uh, it'll collapse the price. Like, you know, if they're allowed to catch whatever they want. And I, I don't know. If I was a cynical person now, I'd be saying that that's what Europe is after. Europe is after cheap fish and they don't care who catches it. It doesn't even have to be a, a European vessel. I'd say it's all about, you know, well, we want cheap food. And if you say, well, you know, well, Patrick, how do you come up with that? 
Well, we look at the the, the uh, agreement that they made with um, Brazil, the Mesnures, uh, if I pronounce it, agreement where offered. The beef production in Europe is to uh, be reduced to allow for beef to come all the way from Brazil. And these are the same people that are saying about global warming and carbon footprints. You know, so like, I don't understand some of the decision making in, in Europe. And the reason why I say I don't understand it isn't because I don't understand the actual decision. I don't understand how people um, are given that much power to be able to have two faces, you know, like you see in the Batman movies, you know, your man flip a coin, uh, he, he's one person and, you know, uh, it turns sideways, he, he, he's somebody else. Um, and that's, to me, that's what Europe is doing, like, you know, and uh, it, it's not going to be good for Europe. It's certainly not going to be good for Ireland or, uh, and the people in rural Ireland. Uh, and I said this before, like, in, I live in rural Ireland and I can, I can see it collapsing around me. Like, yeah, there's there's a lot of people around for the summer. They come out in the cities and they drive around and then they're told so there's no places to stay in rural Ireland. Did they not figure out the reason why there's no people to stay in rural Ireland? It's because rural Ireland is being killed. So there's nobody there to meet them. Like, it's it's a ghost town they're creating. So they might think, ah, sure, this is the way to go. We'll shove them all into the cities. But for the commercial fleet that's getting so heavily attacked all the time, the fish is in the Irish waters. Yeah, and, and, and they're landing at Irish ports. Like, very rarely you'd hear of a, 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 a demersal boat now going to France to land, but we know one of the Plagic boats, seven out of the eight landings was in France, you know. Our own Plagic boats, now the tuna would be landing in, in, in France and Spain. Um, you know, better prices, better quality fish, market is there, less expense, and to be putting them into a truck, just, just go in there, like, but that, that's job losses for Ireland, like. You know, we're, we're always looking about added value and, and fishing. Sure, the fish that we add the most value to is whitefish. And yet they're the ones we're being told. You 15, look, that's, I'm, I'm wrong in, in, in saying that. It, it, the maximum is around 8%. That, that's the maximum right across the board of what Ireland's fish is catching. 8% of it is whitefish. 8% in our waters, whitefish like. And it, 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 it beggars belief. Do you know that that we as an island nation are accepting this? That our politicians are not going out to Europe and 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 and, and just before anybody said, oh, you know, the, 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 even enough, we're not asking for that much more. Like we're, the ten, the 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 eight percent. If we got twelve, you know, if we got a fifty percent increase uh, overall, but in key stocks, it was you know a hundred percent. So, Hague, for instance. Like, is it a big ass to go from 3,000 to 6,000 out of 60,000? I don't think so. You know, Monk, uh, uh, 2,500 when when France is 20,000. You know, surely be the God we should be getting five. And sure, they're down to 17 and a half. So there's still multiples of the fish in our waters. Do you know? Like, it, it shouldn't be a difficult argument to make in Europe. Listen, let's. You destroyed us with Brexit. We need a little bit of fish now. We're looking at the fee days doc, uh, uh, um, records. You're not catching the fish. You know, keep the 10% that you're not catching and carry it forward, fair enough. But the rest, we, we, we want it back. You know, start, you're not catching it. And do a proper monitoring of, of, of these stocks. You know, and, and like... I, I, people don't realise that this is actually happening because they're not being allowed to be told it. It should be like um, the clock that you ring up. You know, it tells you the time. These are all waters. We should be told when you pick up the phone and go, what's left in Hake? What's left in Monk? What's left in Irish waters? The, the, the point is, is that I think we have a case to take to Europe. It's, it's simplistic. And, and we're looking for 50 million worth of whitefish, right? Hake, monk, haddock, uh, bit of sole, um, uh, bit of megrums, right? J just enough to sustain our, 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 our um, demersal fleet, around 50 million. 
And this is asking a woman, right, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, who made the decision on Brexit with Boris, to look at her overall budget, what the Commission have control of, and it's trillions, right? Trillions of, of, of euros, trillions. And all we're asking for is around 50 million uh, of fish that the other countries aren't catching. Where? In our own waters. And until I see that question being asked of the Commission, then I don't think we're being represented properly. And I know, and, and, I, and I'm not saying it vindictively, right? I know that our uh, Department of the Marine will not ask that unless they have something in their hands to offer to give back. And they've stated this categorically. They are not going to even ask for more fish unless they have something to trade. It's not good enough that we trade access into our waters and that the fish are here. That should be enough of a trade. And that is what should be taken away if we don't get enough to sustain our coastal communities before it's too late. Because if anybody thinks that this decommissioning scheme will be the last one, they're calling themselves. Because I don't think there'll be an end to decommissioning until there is nothing left to decommission. And that's that's my honest opinion. And I've been saying that now since I've seen the industry since I was 20 years of age. And I said it back in those years that a decommissioning scheme wasn't going to solve the problem. And it's certainly not going to solve it now. Because if you decommission boats, and they're getting less and less for their fish and expected to, to maintain and, and make do with less, then there has to be less of them, especially when the other countries have commanded the markets and they're already taking the fish from our waters to fulfill the market requirements. And you, if that doesn't change, you know, then nothing will change. And uh, if anybody thinks, ah, sure, it'll get better, the UK have got a lot of fish and they're not given full access to the market yet. Can you imagine when they will be like? You know, and, and, and diesel fuel or MEP, I don't know, did you see that report? I don't know, did you actually have it up? Did you, you know, the debate that Grace O'Sullivan, that she, she believes that we're subsidizing to the one, 1. 1.5 billion, is, is it? Or is it 1.5 yeah. billion? So, and, and fair, so take what I just said. We're looking for 50 million of fish. And she's saying the European fleet is being subsidized to the tune of 1.5 billion. So, like, we're surviving as a country on 200 million of fish. And if she's saying that the fleet is getting 1.5 billion in fuel, who, who's being subsidized? Can't be the Irish fleet. Do you think we're running at a loss? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, if if she if she did a, if she really wants to tackle a problem like that, again, don't target the small fry, the easy pickings, but the people of who elected her to represent them and fight for them in Europe. Take on the big boys. Stop bullying the small ones. Stop wiping us out. We had enough of that in our history. You're, you're a member of the CIFA task force. I know there's probably nothing you can reveal at the moment, but... Well, ask me there. any question you'd like, my friend. Well, we're waiting for it to, to appear so we can have a read at it and see what the recommendations are. But judging from what you, you've said there, it's, it's not all that great, is it? As I said, at the last meeting, there's only there's one more. That's it. And, and at the last meeting, I asked the question about the decommissioning. I said... We're after putting forward our figures now, and BIM putting forward their figures, and I wanted to know what figures are we going with, like? Is it our figures, or is it BIM's figures? If it's BIM figures, we're undervaluing the assets of our fishermen, and we're going to be saying if some poor sod is after buying a boat in the last number of years, he won't be paid out properly. And, and, and again, he didn't buy the boat to, be, to do this. He bought that boat for an investment probably for his son, Never mind himself, you know, he 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 he's seen a future in this 
because he's seen a future in fishing because it's a renewable resource and as long as somebody doesn't feck it up it'll be there for hundreds of years do you know so like the investment it, it is um it's it's like buying a cup that never runs dry but these people want to take the cup off them and and let them die of thirst and that is incredible so i for one on the task force will not be signing up to a decommissioning scheme with the task force or anybody else my name will not be attached to that final report if they don't do the right by the people i'm representing and and the minimum is what they have we've shown is is, is the cost which was um uh, 15000 for um uh, the demersal sector for just uh, no no freezer boats now just just an ordinary trawler uh, uh 20000 for tier 1 and, and 25000 for tier 2 and and in the tier 1 now i would also say that boats that have spent on freezers and put them into their boats should be given a premium as well because they have made additional investments I might be too popular with the art retailer men for that, but that, that's my view. You know, the, 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 the refrigeration units cost a fortune, like hundreds of thousands. And um, they're being told to scrap what they have. You know, it's, it's uh, look, I'm, it makes me sit uneasy in the chair when I say like that we have to have a decommissioning scheme, but I certainly won't be signing up. I, I will be resigning, even if it costs me my job in the South West. I won't be signing up to something that, that isn't equitable for our fishermen to at least give them a chance to come out, even that they won't be going home to their wives and children. I'm sorry, lads, um, I, I made a gamble. Everything we have, we put into the boat, and we're just not going to make ends meet now because we're not getting enough. And, and if I stay fishing, we won't have enough fish. So you're forced out, like, and anybody to tell them that this is voluntary, you know, um, would be singing up the same hymn sheet as me. And I have no problem standing up in front of any politician, TD, teacher, government minister, government um, um, person, or anybody else on the task force, and, and say that to them square, square. And that's me personally, uh, and, and that's my personal opinion. So... I, I, I told my directors that I wouldn't compromise uh, on my own integrity when I went into the job in the Irish South and West, and this would be a red line issue for me. I'm certainly not, and I'm not for decommissioning. I think it's a criminal sin that our country are being forced, as I said, with the richest waters in Europe to even consider putting people out of business because the fish are there and the fish are in our waters. And if we were given a small bit of the fish in our waters, a decent, not even a decent share, a, a, a minute increase overall. We wouldn't need to decommission, and, and we'd, we'd, we'd create futures for the ports and harbours around the coastline, and maybe even improve on it. You know, who, who's to say what will happen? There's, there's new fish coming into our waters all the time, and, and I think it's only going to be a matter of time that they will not be able to put up an argument to say, listen, you're not entitled to this fish because uh, they'll pass us out, they'll go to other countries and they'll be saying they have an entitlement, just like the Norwegians are saying about the mackerel. So if Europe allows them to take more fish, and I mean allow them is, is, is if we took more fish in the morning, we'd be penalised. Look, look, look at the regulations that came in and we'd be dragged into the courts of Europe and fined millions and millions. Look at the weighing on the piers that we couldn't go to the... To, to the to the um, we couldn't weigh it at at the factories. Imagine you had to weigh them on a, on a scales and on, on a pier before put them back in the lorry and then put them in and maybe weigh them again inside the factory. And they don't trust us to do that, but they'll allow um, other countries willy nilly to increase outside the coastal states agreements and say, well, actually, what can we do? Well, do the same as you do to us. Uh, the fish hit the border or whatever, you turn it around and say, thanks very much, but we don't want this. You're not playing by our rules, so you're not having access to our markets. <laughs> Look what they did with the UK, like, you know, with, with shellfish, straight away. Oh, sorry, you're out. So even though this was fine, uh, a, a week before uh, you pulled the trigger on the 1st of January, as in out-out, so on, on the 30th of December, yeah, you can bring in the fish. 
no, you're out, you're out. But not the same for Norway or the Faroe Islands or, or, or Greenland or, or Russia or any of them. So Ireland are the ones that to, to pay the price. That's not right. Patrick, uh, we'll have to leave it there. Um, will you come back to us after the uh, Seafood Task Force report comes out? And we'll discuss it further to see all yeah, the I will. parts that you disagree with. Well, I'd be disagreeing with a lot of it, to be honest with you, and, and that's the truth. I, 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 I certainly believe that everybody should have been treated more equitably. Um, it's, it's a shared resource. Um, there's meant to be no IQQs in this country, um, so it's a national resource, and the share ratios were there as it was, uh, two over 18, uh, or sorry, over 55 feet and, and one underneath. And um, the small boatmen, you know, I know they, it, it's difficult for them to put up um, paperwork and documentation and whether small boat men want to rectify that and, and, and bring in um, uh, huge um, documentation for themselves uh, for the sake of this, I, I, I don't know. Uh, all that stuff costs money if you're going to put in digital systems into boats and Wi-Fi and recording systems, like they don't come cheap, you know, so you, you'll be giving it back out and it's 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 harder to work when you, Big Brother is watching you as well too. You know, I, I explained this to some of with the NPAs coming in and the SACs, uh, gear moves, uh, games moves gears. Um, you maybe you both to get cotton gear. Um, you know, there's different reasons, and if it goes into an SAC, what what will the procedures be? You know, we have to ring in. We have to be a company to take it out, and how many days to get that? We all know how fast paperwork works in our industry um, and how quick things get gets done. Um, not so quick. So I, I would have reservations in that. And um, there would be a lot more coming. Look at the macro. Like, will we have booking in procedures now? Will there be allocations of quota to people that do booking? You know, will, will, will there be a quota regime for, for boats? There's a lot to come now from what, what's happened in the last 12 months. Uh, and I don't think a lot of those issues were dealt with by the task force. I think they were raised. I don't think there was any um, recommendations made. And I think that to the outside people looking at it, I'd say they'd be scratching their head. They say, how did that happen? Yeah, eight or nine months doesn't sound like a lot of time to actually have a seafood task force work through all the problems that Brexit has produced. The one thing that I would say is anybody watching this, um, if you have an interest in fishing uh, and, and you and you want to do something, then please look at programs like this, look at the documentary, but just don't leave it there. Like, pick up the phone to your politicians, talk to people, spread the word. And here's the main thing. If you want to see a viable, healthy industry, no matter what happens with, with this task force, if we don't get more fish, uh, a fair share of the fish in our own waters, if this is only just the first page of the book of disaster for coastal communities, as far as I'm concerned, and there'll be a lot more hardship to come. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, Patrick, and uh, we'll chat to you again. Thanks, Alex. Take care now. Bye, everybody.